we interrupt this broadcast, wouldn't have been nice if I could have faded in with a cool little uh, animation or something, but I'm not that savvy. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Originally, I was going to invite my dear friend Joshua Schaefer on today to talk to us about a pin that I'm going to be introducing. But uh, I had to interrupt the broadcast for something extremely important. And uh, if you're just joining me today, uh, if you're joining me today, I'm going to share my heart with you today. This is going to be a little bit different broadcast, okay? And if you're listening and watching it later and it's not live, I'm going to be sharing my heart with you today. So if for any reason um, this might be too intense for you or you'd rather not watch, I get it, okay? Uh, but there are times when, as someone who's broadcasting live, something happens in our lives that we just have to acknowledge and that I feel needs to be shared, and that's today, okay? So last weekend, something hit and hit me pretty hard and uh, so I'm going to share my heart with you today. And uh, and at the end, maybe we'll we'll get an upbeat story. But um, Mondays, I would not do this on an AMA unless something happened on Thursday. But the weekend hit really hard and it was a Saturday. So many of you know, let me just go into it, okay? Many of you know that I have created a set of hitchhiking ghosts, okay? Let me just fire this up. It was supposed to be ready, but of course I, I, I got hit by a thunderbolt guys. I got, I got really hit by a thunderbolt and you'll notice if you read the thumbnail, why do I continually stress over making the experience of these ghosts so special? Why is that important as an artist? Why is it important that you create an experience as opposed to just putting these guys in a bag and sending them to you or some box with, 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 with little bubbles, making sure they don't break and nothing else. Why does an artist put in a special note or why does an artist go as far as to do a certificate of authenticity or create the entire experience from the time you opened the, um, the priority mail box and pull away that, that wrap and you see it. Why is it so important for that experience to start the minute you see the box that they come in? Okay. You may not know the answer. Okay. But you, you, you wonder, and, and, and this, these ghosts, these hitchhiking ghosts, these little suckers here were really hard for me to do. They were really, really a challenge. They almost, they, they, they almost broke me. Okay, because it's the pandemic and because of the pandemic, the manufacturers raised the price. What could they do? They had less people, more work. They couldn't use the people they thought they could use because it took more time to make them because, of course, I'm an artist. And these had to be so special. They had to be the way I saw them. They had to be my vision. They had to illuminate. They couldn't just light. And this was where the manufacturers became challenged. You know, you could, you, you've seen your others. If you collect the hitchhiking ghost, you've seen what yours do. That light lights up in the belly, like they have acid reflex, or there's a light that lights them from the out. You know, it's, it's, this is illumination. And when I show you that, what I mean by that, look at Professor Phineas's hat and his legs. If you look at the legs on Professor Phineas, you can see that his back leg shines through his, his uh, uh, carpet bag. This is what I'm talking about, guys. This is what I'm talking about. And the camera doesn't show them as well as they actually look, okay? But this is what I work so hard to stress on. This is why it took two years to make these because I didn't want to give you a stupid, ridiculous... Um, 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 hearing aid battery or not even a hearing aid battery. It was one of those nickel size flat batteries. I didn't want you to go through that. I wanted it to be a simple AAA battery. And it, I was just having trouble with the technology. I was having trouble making the, 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 the space small enough in order so you didn't have, you know, a dinner plate base and a little bitty ghost on top of it. All of this was what I was stressing over. And many artists said, you're overthinking it. OK, when I did the the pirate bed, I made the magnifying glass magnify. And many artists said you're worrying too much about that. It doesn't matter. They'll collect it anyway. 
But it does matter, doesn't it? It does matter to take that extra time and create that experience all the way from the time you open it. So why am I telling you this today? Because of one particular man who is having some challenges right now. His name is Kevin Weber. And please say a quick prayer for him because he's in the hospital. Now, Kevin Weber, and I want you to think right now, put yourself in the position of Kevin. You're very, very sick and you're in the hospital. Yet something inside you makes you have to call the artist and tell them how much seeing these ghosts receiving, let me say it that way, receiving these ghosts means to you. So I sent Kevin his ghosts. He kept asking me for them and asking me for them and asking me for them. And I kept hitting walls. This is the first set of five that went out. But Kevin, as, as challenged as he was, invested in the illuminating ghost. For him, this was a very special set. And for many of the people who have adopted these ghosts, these are very special because there's nothing like them on earth. And that is not an arrogant statement. Plus, it has my blood and it has my bones in it. It was not an easy thing. In fact, someone suggested doing an illuminated Cheshire cat. And I was like, oh, heck no, that ain't happening. I'm not going to do another illuminating thing for a while. It was too hard. It was really rough. But why did I keep going? Has that ever happened to you as an artist or as a broadcaster or, you know, fill in the blank here? Is it ever something inside you that just you weren't sure why, but you had to keep going? Well, Kevin Weedenweber gave me the answer. Okay. So from his hospital bed, he called me. And. He called me back east. So the first time he called me was four in the morning from his hospital bed. And then he said he realized that he had done that and hung up. But when someone calls you at four in the morning, you get a little worried, don't you? You know, because you think it could be your parents. You think it could be, you don't know what it could be. Really? You just don't know. And you're like, I don't know what it could be, but I'm nervous. I'm scared. I'm concerned. So I get up at five, six o'clock in the morning anyway. So I listened to the message and it was Kevin saying, I'm sorry. He could barely talk. I'm sorry. I just wanted to let you know what these ghosts mean to me. He called me again a little bit later and I was fixing breakfast for my husband. It was Saturday. So finally we connect and his voice is broken. He has been, he has been through some stuff. Um, I'm not liberty to tell you exactly what's going on. He can tell you if he, you know, when he feels like it or his wife, his dear wife, Cheryl, but the family is together because they're worried about him. He's, he's struggling right now. Let me just say that. And in all of that struggle, he calls me to tell me, and I'm, I didn't want to do this because it, it really hit hard. I'm not used to people calling me from the hospital. I'm used to them working on getting well. But something about these ghosts made him feel good. Something about holding them in his hand and turning them on and moving them around and looking at them made him feel better. And all of a sudden, as if struck by lightning, I realized that's the person I do it for. Not the person who's sick or ailing, although that's important, but you guys who collect these pieces, you don't collect them, am I right? Just to fill up your cabinets, just to, I mean, there are those from eBay who, 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 buy so many and then they up the price and scalp you. And it's so mean spirited. I mean, Disney and other people should limit that because you guys don't collect what you collect because you want to fill your cabinets or resell it. Most of you out there collect it because you love it for one reason or another. Maybe as a child, 
you did it with your mom or dad. Your mom or dad took you to a very special place at Disneyland and they bought you that first figurine and that's been your special ever since. Maybe it struck you like Tinkerbell. Many Tinkerbell people tell me they love that sassy little character. She's not as pure as a princess or as milk toasty. She's got fire and she's sprightly and she gets angry and she she has real emotion and she's clever and she's sweet and she's kind and she's sassy. That's why you collect Tinkerbell, perhaps. The point is, you don't just collect to collect. So this is one of the reasons I continue to sculpt and create figurines because lately I don't know how you feel and maybe it's with the exception of Grogu because I've seen some really great Grogu stuff. I really have. I'm going to, I got to give kudos where kudos belong. Uh, but usually the stuff that Disney's putting out is subpar. Okay, it's not like it was during the 50th anniversary of Disneyland. It wasn't that good, strong, good quality stuff. Something is always missing. And you still collect it because there's something in your heart that that strikes you, so you collect it. But this is why I keep doing what I'm doing. This is why I sculpt the way I sculpt. And the ghosts are no different. These ghosts are sculpted the way they're sculpted because I want you, the collector, to have something that strikes you and gives you the ultimate experience. When you turn them on, you actually can see that they are illuminating. You can see for yourself that the leg passes through the handbag and looks like there's actually a specter standing on your shelf as opposed to a light switch ghost or a non-light switch ghost. Even then, when this happened, I was devastated when I had to raise the price more because of COVID-19 and the manufacturer saying, this is all we can do. We're sorry. I felt like I was up against the wall. I felt like I was being held hostage. But I just didn't want to disappoint you guys. I, this was so special. Believe me, if you held these in your hands, you'd be buying them. I would not have 13 left. I only have 13 sets left. You would not, if, if you could have been opposite me, they would have sold out. But because I have to rely on virtual they're staying around a little longer and it's a little more of an investment. But also with the investment, if you think about it, my normal single figures go for just under $200. That's what's been happening. They've gotten more and more involved through time. They started out at a, list and on a little under $100 and they went higher. The reason was because they became more and more involved. My, um, my Jiminy Cricket has... Uh, let me just find him so that I can kind of illustrate to you what I'm talking about because it's all better with a visual, right? So just so I can show you what I mean about this little Jiminy Cricket figure, which I think I have like six available. All right. That's all I've got left out of the hundred is I've only got six, but let me see if I can find that little fella. Okay, here we go. So, this Jiminy Cricket has 35 different individual colors in his outfit, hand-painted, each and every one hand-painted, and a hundred of them done. And I only have six left. I do this because you guys say to me, this is missing in my collection. That's what I'm here to fill a void, to fill a void in your heart. And if you've got a gazillion ghosts, then why would you get a gazillion and one? And why will you invest in mine? Why? Because they illuminate. So uh, this is what was driven home to me by Kevin. Kevin, in his tiny voice at the hospital, said, I love these ghosts. They give me hope. Thank you for filling me with wonder and joy. Thank you for making me feel good. Thank you for going to the trouble. 
And he talks from the time he sees the box, which I have done custom. I will tell you that it's custom box. Um, it's a hand draw. It's a custom certificate. It's a custom. Everything about it is custom because you invest, you invest $1,299 in the set. It's got to be special for you. Each and every one is special. Each and every one is numbered. Each and every one has an instruction sheet to help you put the batteries in because I know how scared you get if you have to turn these things upside down. You don't want to damage your little guys, you know? But Kevin really helped me to see why I go through this torture. Why is this torture so important? So I, I know that all of you have said such, you know, those of you who have gotten the ghosts have said beautiful, wonderful things. But you got to admit, when someone takes the time to call you from the hospital, they're very sick. And they call from the hospital because they just want you to know how much it meant to them that you took the time to send them. That you took the, that you sweat. Maybe you, you were up as an artist extra late because you were trying to get that, that one thing that wasn't happening to happen. That you didn't give up at two years because you couldn't get that AAA battery to fit in a base small enough. That you made them illuminate even though everyone told you you were crazy and it couldn't be done. <sighs> this is the, you know, and if you're joining me right now and you're seeing that I have my tear-filled eyes and you're like, what is going on with her? This is what happened this weekend to me. A guy calls me from the hospital, very sick, can barely speak and is having a little trouble breathing. And No, he doesn't have COVID. He's got other issues, another issue that's really messing with him. And his his dear partner and wife is by his bedside. And it takes me to the time when my husband had quadruple bypass surgery. And there I was too, like a tiger. If the doctors dared to do things they shouldn't be doing, I was all over him like ugly on an ape. So I spoke with Cheryl and I could see that she was right there. And she was there guarding and taking care of the man of her life, the love of her life. <sighs> And the son has come from where he lives and he's going to stay because they're frightened. And yet, what does he do? He calls me on the phone. I'm not a relative. I'm an artist who just happened to make ghosts that he absolutely adores. Yet he took that time saying thanks for me for taking the top. And I just couldn't do a happy, giggly broadcast today many of you are out there many of you are artists many of you are wondering why what's the point of creating this is the point you gotta do it don't wait don't wait to create but don't get all full of yourself because you can do it understand you are at the service of the people who love and collect your work. You are at their service. And it is all of you and your love for the work that I do and myself that makes it worthwhile. I didn't mean to do this, I'm sorry. I don't do this, this is not my channel. My channels make you feel good. But there are times, and that's why I called it, we interrupt this program, because I really, this was something that had to get out. And I didn't want to not join you today because I wasn't my sunny self. I want you to know that as sunny as I am, as bright as I am, as positive as I am, sometimes I get hit with something that really moves me. Like into the next county moves me. And it was just so, so important for me to get this message. And Kevin was, Kevin Wheaton Weber was the one who delivered it. And you never know when you're, where you're going to get it from. And you got to listen. 
And then you got to be thankful that you are an artist who can provide this for people. Whether you're a musician, whether you are, you design with lights, whether you clean, whether you raise your kids, it doesn't matter what it is. You must do it because it benefits somebody. Your special ability, whatever that ability is, benefits somebody and you just don't know who it's going to benefit. So, because people are shy, they don't usually, they don't do what Kevin did. I mean, seriously, this man, I will tell you, was sick enough to be intubated for a while, okay? And yet, who does he think to call? This this is a big, <sighs> I am not that special that someone should call me from the hospital. At least I didn't think so until he called me. Now I'm feeling pretty damn glad that I, pardon my French, if your kids are watching, <laughs> but I'm pretty glad that, that he took the time to, to share this with me because it's so ultra important. It's, it's, it was so important to him that no matter how he sick he was, he needed me to know this because I have really struggled with these ghosts. They are, they are just, there we go. Pardon me. If you're just joining me, no, this isn't a channel about blowing my nose. I just really, I'm really in a spot. And I want you to know that as a human being and an artist, you're going to be here. Sometimes you're going to be where I am today. It's not all sunshine, you know, but then it is sunshine because I have really been working hard on those ghosts and they have not been my friends all the time. I really had a push me, pull you struggle with the manufacturers, with the getting them out. I kept hitting walls. I had to keep jumping over walls to get the first five out. Now I'm saying it quietly, the next five for the February gang look like they're going to come out, but I don't want to say it too loud because these ghosts are stinkers. I just want to get it together so that they are humming along so that I can do another cool project that you guys always are asking me about that I'm going to do. So there you got it. If you're just joining me or you've never been on this channel before and you're going, what the? Take a look at my some of my other stuff. I did this today on Monday because I won't do it on an Ask Me Anything. But my whole body just was knocked into the next, just, just, just knocked for a loop because of this, you know? And, uh, and if you're an artist out there and you're struggling to get something right, a painting right or something, you know how important it is. Saturday, I became this person who was hit so hard by Kevin's words that I had to take time off for myself to just let them digest and then to journal about them and to thank God that I have this ability that can touch someone so deeply that it makes them feel better. I mean, who would have thought that's the case, right? But it's interesting because I saw a, I started to watch YouTube and I started to watch painters because I want to learn how to paint. I paint okay, but I really, but my husband bought me some really beautiful paints and I would really like to do them justice because they're really incredible paints. So I started to study and, and follow other people who paint. And I, I ran across a fellow who I can't even tell you his name because I was going from one to one to one to one. But his struggle, what really made me stop with him was that he wanted to paint this sculptor in Australia that he happened to meet, and an older gentleman, and he just was touched so deeply by him that he wanted to paint his portrait. And we follow him on YouTube painting the portrait, and it's not right. He actually, on camera, lets us see how frustrated he gets because it's not right. And he turns to the camera and he says, it's not right. It's not right. And I look at it and thought it was really close to the fellow he was trying to paint. But I know what he meant. 
because he was, you don't just paint something and match it or sculpt something and match it. You want the heart of whatever you are creating to come through. You want it to touch the person. You want to pay homage, pay respect to the person. If you're doing a likeness, for example, you're doing a portrait. You want their joy to come through or their personality to come through. And although I thought the likeness was accurate, I could understand with this painter why it wasn't right. And he got up and he stopped the video and he said, I'll return to it later. And he said it had gotten to the point where he felt like he should just start over from scratch because he just felt he was going down a road that just wasn't the right one. And I can't remember... If he started from scratch or if he just worked the original painting, but eventually he he nailed it. He walked away and then he came back and he nailed it. And this is the thing that I think I talk to a lot of you about is as artists is that if it's not working, step away, have a coffee, have a tea and um, do, do yourself a favor. You know, because, because it's very important to... Um, to get up out of your chair and move away. Because when you come back, a lot of times the solutions are presented to you. And what do you call that? Do you call that, uh, man, that, that camera is so weird. My husband's going to be like, that camera is weird. But trying to hide the light. Oh, I know. He changed the aspect. Oh, well. <laughs> I digress. But the point is, is that you are struggling with something and you can keep working it and keep worrying it and keep worrying it. Uh, and this can apply anywhere because the definition of an artist, and if you're just joining me, uh, this is what I often say, is the definition of an artist is someone who is passionate about what they do. If you are passionate about being an accountant, then you are an artist as an accountant. Just think about when the numbers don't balance. You are constantly working to make that number balance, aren't you? And if it doesn't work, what is it that the detective work you have to do to make those numbers balance? Why not just give up? But you don't, do you? You keep going. It's the same with if you clean houses. I mean, there are three ladies who come and clean my house. Why? Because they do 10 times better than I do. They are so good. The house is cleaner than when I bought it. I'm just amazed at them. But, but imagine if cleaning is your thing and you got that one spot and it's your mission and you, you, you just keep going. Okay. That spot is not going to win. That spot is not going to beat me. So you, you figure your formulas and you share your formulas with this or you do it. Same with the cooking, same with raising your kids. If this is your passion, then you are an artist. It's not all about painting, drawing, sculpting, or performing. Okay. But it's about that too. If you're a musician who's writing a song and you just, that song is not conveying, everybody else says it's wonderful, but to you, there's something missing. That's because there's a part of you that has not yet been put in it. And then afterwards, if you begin to think, you know, I've, I've neglected my family a little bit. I've, I've, I don't know what, what the situation is, but, th but there's that time as an artist where you sit back and you go, is it worth it? All of the struggle, this blood, this bone, this, this thing that is ripping me apart and making me awful because I can't get it solved. Is it worth it? I hope you get a call from somebody like Kevin Weedweber who called me difficulty breathing to tell me how much these ghosts meant to him. You know, he, he took the time to tell me these ghosts meant an awful lot to him. I'm going to show them to you one more time as soon as I tap them. Hey, see, there they go again. Little stinkers. But he, he took the time to tell me how much these ghosts meant to him. And they are no small investment, okay? They are not my under $200 figure figure. Okay. They are, they're more because there's, there's a lot of hours that went into it. There's a lot of struggle that went into it. There's a lot of scraping and fighting. And I did a lot of things custom. A lot of things are by hand. They're pulled by hand. They're painted by hand. They're built by hand. 
The boxes are all custom designed by hand. I did. Now I didn't draw 100 boxes, but I mean 50 boxes, but the designs were designed and then sent to the, someone who incidentally lost them originally. So I had that stress to deal with, you know, custom boxes. Many people have seen the box and said, I'd buy the box, which is exactly my point. I said with the manufacturer, they better not be lost because the last thing you want to do when you've paid some money for these ghosts is find the box on eBay for an exorbitant price because somebody decided not to return them. So I had that stress. It just was one of those projects. You know what I mean. I know you all know what I mean. That hair ripping project that you're just like, are you kidding me? Why is it fighting me so much? And why do I care? And then you get a call from Kevin in the hospital who got his ghosts. And he says in a quiet little voice, they're so magnificent from the time I opened the box. They're so beautiful. Thank you. And do you think it was easy for someone like Kevin and his family to spend $1,300 on a set of ghosts? You don't think I don't feel that? I didn't arbitrarily pick that number. I really wanted it to be less. Those of you who've been following ghosts know I did. And yet, he never... He knew how much he wanted him and his wife knew how much they'd mean to him. And then they took the time to tell me from the hospital. It's time to be thankful for all of you for, for thinking that, for doing that, for investing in the stuff I create for letting me know how much it touches you and how special it is. And you've all done it at one point or another, maybe not from the hospital, but you do, you, 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 you make sure I know. And I'm grateful for that, but I don't take it for granted. And I guess that's my message. And don't think you're being stupid because you keep fighting. You keep fighting because of the people like you, that it's very important. It's very important you have something. So when this happened, not the Kevin call, but when I got hit with more money for these and had to up the price on the people who had the illuminating ghosts, I dropped the addition to 50 so that they would be more valuable should you ever sell it. However, you guys who love these ghosts aren't planning on selling it. But I think you were grateful for that. But on top of that, I thought with it being COVID-19, there had to be more that I give you. I had to do something more just in case you may not be able to push yourself to, you know, this is COVID. That extra $300 could mean the difference between you and your rent or your food or your kids. So I had to do something a little different. And I did. I created these guys. These are the black light ghosts. These black light ghosts are only $750, which is still a big chunk. I get it. Believe me. Believe me. But it's a lot close to the $200 per figure that I usually do, right? This is the way that they look when they aren't being hit with the black light. And you can see Professor Phineas on the side. He's starting to go through his black light change, right? But they look like a nice stone figure. So they're still appealing to the eye. And then when you hit them with a the black light, and these are the illuminating ones, but I'm going back because I want you to be able to see it again. When you hit them with the black light, they change, but they change externally, not internally. So they don't illuminate, but they're still extremely cool. Yes, they are my same castings. The idea was to bring the price down in case you had ordered an illuminating ghost for the original price, but you just couldn't see, you just couldn't make that extra $300 work. This was also important to me that you don't feel like you're missing out. You, just because I got pushed up against the wall, I didn't want you as collectors to be pushed up against the wall, okay? I didn't want you to think 
that this was something that I handled. In fact, I spoke with you, most of you on Zoom because I wanted you to hear what I had to say because this was hard. This was seriously, seriously difficult for me. Really difficult. And that side is driving me crazy. So I'm just going to deal with the stupid light. I like that framing better. <laughs> yeah, see that light? Just, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll figure it out. But the point is that 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 this was 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 I had to do these black light ghosts because I didn't want you to have the pain if you decided, hey, I can't push it to get those illuminated ghosts. But I want Terry's style. I love the whimsy of the look of them. I love the way they make me feel. I love the that I came up with these guys. And they're $750. So now if you had purchased the illuminating ones and you couldn't see your way to getting the, to, to paying the extra for the illuminating ones, you were going to get a refund. And it also gave you the opportunity if you really needed to, to disc open the discussion about, you know, the payments and stuff. It just made it easier on you. I mean, this is why I made those is because it's hard to let something that you love really a lot go. So I wanted to give you an option too. There's a, these are also a hundred of these. And what happened, many of you bought the second set as well. And many of you, and then I think a couple switched, but this was so that you could make a decision without having to feel bad about losing the hitchhiking ghost, because many of you have really been waiting. You've been waiting those, you've been kind of journeying with me those two years. And many of you felt like Kevin Weeden Weber. They, they touched you so deeply. You saw that they illuminated, you know, it was my vision, but they're both my vision in different ways. Yes. The illuminating ghosts are the ones that are, I mean, if I show them to you on this shelf, see what they do. And when you turn the light out, they look like they're floating. Let me see if there. This actually looks like they're floating in space. You've got ghosts that are materializing, materializing on your shelf. I just want you to know that Kevin made me realize why I'm working so hard to make this happen. Why I'm struggling with every sculpture that I make to make it from the time you open the postage box and see the box that holds your sculptures. You are strapping yourself in, pulling the bar down, and about to have the ride. About to experience the total immersion of these pieces. This is why mine are a little more costly than normal. I don't make thousands of them. All of them come from my own little hands. I don't make other sculpts and put my name on it either. Bob Oshesky told me I'll never make my million dollars. And the reason is because I have to sculpt everything myself. Well, if my name is going on it, is it fair to take another sculptor's art and then put my name on it? I don't think so. Is it fair to have someone else paint and then you sign it? I don't think so. But if that's you designing it and you're okay with that, that's you. Okay, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying for Terry Harden, it doesn't work. Terry Harden has to sculpt the pieces. Then Terry has to oversee the pieces. And I limit those to no more than 100. And in most cases, there's only 50. The only reason I was going to do 100 with the Hitchhiking Ghosts is because so many wanted them. And I could have sold them. But when it jumped up, I decided to go with my normal, which is 50 for the illuminating ones. Now the, the black light ones are at a hundred. That's so that that keeps the price low so that you guys can have it for 750. You can have that set. Also, uh, they will start shipping in February where the illuminating ghosts only ship five per month. They're that challenging to create. One of it is because of COVID-19, the, the manufacturing group is less people, they're social distancing, less people, more work. You know the drill. I don't need to tell you. So this is their challenge as well. But as an artist, this is the situation, you know, even if it's a print that you're, 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 you know, or digitally producing, or you've, you know, you're doing that, you know, if you make the entire experience special, it's just going to mean more. 
you know, I will not throw a ghost in a, in a, a, a bubble wrap bag, put it in a box and you open it up and there they are in bubble wrap. There's no, there's no, ex, you know, whoo, some experience. This is just me now. Okay. But Kevin taught me as many of you have, this is why this is important to theme and create an experience, not just sell a product. Okay. The more of you can immerse them in how much you love the product. And let's say somebody goes to your store, they buy it and they don't know you personally. By opening the box and having the experience, they're going to know you are one of these crazy people who is all about the details from A to Z. I want you to feel good by the time you open that priority mailbox and there is that custom box. You open that custom box. And if you ordered these illuminating ghosts, I only have 13 left, by the way. But if you ordered these and you're waiting for yours, I want you to really look at that box. When you pull that flap up, I want you to read what's underneath. And when you open it up, I want you to experience everything because every single detail I did. And someone like Kevin, who called me from the hospital, felt compelled to call me while sick to let me know how much this meant to him. And that just, that just really got to me this weekend. That really, really got to me. So thank you for allowing me to talk for 41 minutes on this thing. Because it just, and the thing was, Sunday, yesterday was my husband's birthday. I really thought when I left on Friday that I was going to be telling you about the, 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 the thing because I am a detail person. What I did for his birthday. But I couldn't start with that. And he completely understood, which is why I called this, we interrupt this program. And you're not always going to get this from me because this happens, uh, this, people say thank you a lot and I'm so grateful and I'm always grateful and I'm writing about it all the time, honestly, in my journal. But I try to stay upbeat and positive because I know you guys are struggling and going through stuff. So I don't necessarily always share my magma. But today I thought it was something important that you guys could, could benefit from too. And um, this is what the, the channel is about. You know, I'd love for you to subscribe and I'd love for you to comment and I'd love for you to talk to me and know that on Fridays, ask me anything is ask me anything. If I don't think I'm going to answer it, I won't, but most of the time I answer it. And I love when you participate. You know, it's more than just a comment. It's participating. It's letting me know how you feel. And that's what's really touches me. When you take a moment to make a comment, it's not easy. You know, you may think people comment and it's super easy. It's not easy. To write it down and to, to form your words right and then spell check screws it up. And you feel like you the thing that you really wanted to say from your heart is not being conveyed in the words because these words are ridiculous and spell check screws it up, whatever. But I'm telling you that when you take the time to tell me, it's really special. And you do not have to call me from the hospital. <laughs> you need to get well in the hospital. But understand, Kevin Weber and anybody who happens to be listening to this lever later and they're in the hospital, if you've called me from the hospital, I want you to know it didn't go unnoticed. It really struck me to the core. So um, thank you for hanging in. Thank you for letting me tell you why I struggle so hard. And this is why I only do one or two sculptures a year for you guys. Because it's, it's more than just a drawing and it's more than just pulling up something from Disney and copying what it, copying what I see. There's, I want to create emotion. That's why it's called Brushes. The very first piece I did was a was a Remy, but the second piece I did was Stitch. And Stitch, uh, I spoke with a lot of people like you that loved Stitch. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because a lot of you said we love the whole movie of Stitch. 
and the problem, the challenges we have with the Disney company and what they are providing us in sculptures to collect or mugs or t-shirts or fill in the blank is that the characters that we collect are all positive. They're either smiling in the case of Stitch, he's either smiling or doing his Elvis bit or dancing with, uh, you know, um, Lilo. Or he's angry or he's got his six arms and his guns and he's being crazy. And many of you said, I love the whole movie. I don't just love Stitch being happy or nuts. I love those tender moments where Stitch is learning where Stitch is feeling, where, where Stitch is maybe a little melancholy. So as a result, what I did was I got, I reached out to all of you and I said, so we want to feel a tender moment from Stitch. So I created this Stitch. He sold out, but this is what you asked for from me. You asked, and, and if you're an artist out there and you're wondering, what do I create for people? You ask your audience, what can I do? I'm really about altering it to suit you, which is how the ghost began to illuminate, right? Yeah. Now I'm being asked about Grogu, but I'm not just going to barf up another Grogu. I'm going to I'm gonna do something that's extra special and unique because you guys are, have a million Grogu's. I want you to have a Grogu that means something if I'm going to do it or I don't want to do it. And Disney is really treating that character with a lot of love, I think. If not, let me know in the comments what ones are not good because Groot became uh, a thing because I went and looked at all the Groots and they were horrible. They were just horrible. I mean... They were not even, I couldn't feel that character. And I had seen the movie. And the baby Groots just didn't make me feel the, oh, of baby Groot. And why not? I don't know why. So that's what I say about Stitch here. Oh, and so then I created this, which is called Lost. That was the title. Okay. And the sticker you see is what was on the front of his little blue box. So he had a little blue box. And the blue box was the color of his little chin that little light blue. And then the sticker went on it and it says, uh, nobody gets left behind Ohana, but it's called lost. And you remember it was the sequence where little stitch was on his own and he was lonely and he was lost. And he's not necessarily anywhere in the movie holding the book like this, but that's what I do. As an artist, I create the feeling so that when you hold him in your hand, you feel him. You feel like Stitch is looking at you. You feel like Groot is looking at you, not like it's a stone replication of something that you love. And that takes work. Yeah. And so I want to thank all of you for, for chiming in, for letting me know what you love. If I talk to you about how, what these characters mean for you, for you to talk to me, the Oswaldians this year, I did a kicking Oswald the Lucky Rabbit that sold out really fast. My first kinetic sculpture, he spun. That was in honor of my friend Diana Waller who died before she could actually have it. She suggested it and then she died suddenly and that really knocked me for the loop again. But you all, many of you told me your Diana stories. Many of you told me why I should do it. And that's why I say I want to thank you. Okay. So now I'm going to go over to your comments and then I'll come back and we'll talk a little something more. This might be a little bit shorter, like shorter by an hour and a half. Maybe it'll be an hour and a half or two hours instead of three. But uh, I thought this was really super important. So I'm going to go over to your comments now. Before I do, let me just say one thing. And that is feel free to go to terryharden.com, click on online store and see what I've got up for sale. Don't have to buy. It's not like when you click on this and you click on online store, the claws come out and you can't leave until you buy something. That's not what it's about. Feel free to, feel free to peruse and look and see what's there. Okay. I would just love for you uh, to see what's there if you want to see what's there. And then... Um, 
Kevin is a patron of mine. Kevin Weber is a patron of mine. And so if you decide you want to lend your voice and hear more heartfelt stuff, we really get down into, it's not that we get personal or anything. It's just that we're a lot more frank on that channel because it's private. And um, sometimes a person feels more comfortable if they know things aren't being recorded and they can kind of speak their mind without getting dissed for it in a time when you know how people get dissed for a slip of the tongue or whatever. But uh, it's $5 a month and I give you a private Facebook page Mondays and Fridays. And also we do a zoom call. So every, every Wednesday. So it's up to you. It's no pressure. No, you must. It's, it's, you know, if you want to, you can. Okay. All right. Okay. That's, that's, yeah, that's kind of it. All right. So let's see what you have to say. Let's let's talk to you all. OK. Hello, Nate. So in the beginning, we all say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello again. Uh, Jessica was great to see Jessica because Jessica has had her, her, you know, her own challenges with the pandemic and she's back and she's she's getting better. And we're so glad to have her. Hi, Angie. Suffering with a migraine. Oh no. And thank you. She always has a nice word. Angie always has a nice word. Angie, I should speak a little quieter or turn the sound down so you don't hurt your head. But we're I'll pray that it gets better because I don't want you to be in a migraine. Hi, Joseph. Always a pleasure. Good morning, Terry Montgomery. Hello, Bonnie. I love this part, actually. You know, I love when you guys all say hello. Um, if you're just joining me, this is what I do all the time. Those are still, thank you, Sally. Um, this is what I do all the time is go back and, and hear what your comments are because that's the thing that really gives joy. So if you're just joining me and you think this comment part is a little bit, I don't know, maybe you don't think this is a good idea. I get it, but it is a good idea. It's great to hear what, and see, because people like Larry say details matter and make all the difference. And he says, and you know, it's great to have that, to hear that from you. Sally says, that's why your art's so good. Pride in your work. Well, and uh, it's all about delivering. I got to deliver to you what you ask for. It's got to be, if you have a hundred of this character you love on your shelf, mine has got to be different because mine is a little more of an investment. Okay. Mine is art. So I'm not saying that some of the stuff Disney puts out is not art. No, please don't think that. But mine is so limited and mine is done by my hands and my time is limited. It better be good because I'm asking more for it, right? I can't have this devil may care willy nilly attitude that you're just going to collect whatever I burp up. I can't have that attitude. The attitude is wrong. It's bad for any artist to have this attitude. Angie says, prayers and loves for Kevin. Thank you, Angie. And this is the other thing I love about you guys is thinking about Kevin. But can you imagine someone just taking that time to let an artist know how deeply they were moved by something that came from their hands? This is a lot. Bonnie says, you are an amazing, kind-hearted soul, Terry. We appreciate and love how you truly see how much these things mean to us. Even the live chat, sending good vibes to Kevin. Thank you for saying that, Bonnie. And this is why I go to the comments. Is because when you take the time to speak up and let me know you're out there and that you appreciate this. Because I don't know how many you've ever broadcast, but broadcasting to a camera, <laughs> I can't hear your, your joy. This is why I like the Zoom calls on my Patreon page is I get to hear from you. I get to hear your stories. We get to have like an actual conversation. This feels so one-sided if there's no comments. So I love the comments. I love them. Every single one. Joseph Massey said, says... I hope everything goes better for Kevin. Terry, you're a wonderful and caring woman. And this is why so many adore you. And thank you for saying that. I really appreciate your understanding today about me going through that small little crisis meltdown thing. Because I just had to talk to you guys about it. I just had to. I mean, I don't know who else you talk to about, but the people who collect. How important you are to me. It's a great way to say it. And then to find out how important I am to you by someone who calls you from the hospital when they're really sick is just like, that's a lot. That's a lot, guys. Did one of the people from my group get a Jiminy from you? If not, I need to send him a message about it. I'm not sure, Nate. 
No, I don't think so, Nate. I don't think so. Do you need me to send you a picture? I can text you a picture or you can grab it off my store site. Terryhotton.com. So either way, I'm at your service. There I go again. <laughs> Larry says, your love and passion for what creates shows in your work. As an artist myself, the things I love to create are based on the things I feel close to and most contacted to. So let me ask you, Larry, have you had something like this happen to you? Have you had, I mean, I can't imagine you haven't. If you are putting blood, bone, and everything you have, maybe staying up late, losing sleep, maybe missing a meal, um, maybe not going to the bathroom enough. <laughs> I've done it all. If this is you and you've put all of that into your art, I'm sure you've had someone come up to you and move you beyond belief. Let me know. Please post it in the comments and share because that's what I'm talking about. If you're someone who's always wanted to be creative or an artist, this is the reason to do it because you never know who's missing out on your, on your creativity. Who's it going to touch? Who's it going to reach? Who's it's going to, who's going to, who's it going to inspire? Who's it going to make feel better? Whose life is it going to save? And I know that sounds so weird, but it's really, really true. I've had someone tell me, okay, and on the Ask Me Anything, if you want to know about this life-saving, there's two stories. The first one is Foster Farms Chickens, which are these silly commercials I do, slash save someone's life, okay, and then... The other one is about a man whose career meant nothing, but then they had a session with me and it was life-changing and just say dinosaur paw and I'll know what you mean. Okay. And that's on the ask me anything for Friday this Friday. Uh, you can post it in the comments. You can just join me live. I go for about three hours. I've been going like almost four, but you can post it in the comments of on Friday and I will go to the comments and read it. Or you can just message me or Leo Holzer who uh, collects the questions and ask me that Friday. Okay. But those are the clues so that I will trigger my mind because that all happens on, I usually do that Friday so I can stay, you know, a little bit more focused today on this. Uh, Bonnie sends hearts. Oh, Bonnie. <laughs> Thank you. Hugs, Terry. You're an amazing, lovely girl. And hugs and kisses from Angie. Angie is one of the people who encouraged me. And this is your fault, Angie. Encouraged me to go longer on my on my live broadcasts, so like, especially the Friday one. Because she says it helps her get through some of the challenges she's having with the pandemic. So for people like Angie, that's why I'm doing it. You didn't know that, did you, Angie? I I don't know if I've ever told you that, Angie, but I should. Never apologize. We're human. Nope. And that's why, Bonnie, I said today, we interrupt this broadcast. That's why I titled it, We Interrupt This Broadcast, because it was so, I could not not. Do you know what I mean? You try, it's, uh, I call it fireside chats. You can come in from the harsh cold of reality and sit by and have a story. And then I do that this morning. But I had to open it with saying, I'm going to share you with, I'm going to share my heart with you today. So if you're just joining, this is what's happening today. I'm sharing my heart. This is a interrupt broadcast interruption. And if you watch it after the live, understand that I'm sharing my heart with you today. I'm, I'm not that, you know, happy go lucky person. I mean, I am, but this was a huge thing that happened. And I think there's a message that needs to be said here to artists all over the world. And I mean, you need to also understand that if you're passionate about what you do, you're an artist. It doesn't really pertain just to fine arts. It pertains to anything you do. I mean, you've seen some of the creative things that people have done that have nothing to do with drawing, painting, sculpting, or music. It's true, all of those people have done it too. And they, we all have that struggle, but yay, you know, good for you. You know, if you've discovered that helping people find homes for abandoned dogs or cats or or you've 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 become this 
mega volunteer to make sure people get food. Are you not an artist at what you do coming up with this stuff? Right? So that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying today. Today's message is that. Okay. Uh, Angie says, this is what you're about. You care with, uh, we know all this. And that's why you're here twice a week for hours because you care. <laughs> it's true. You ask me. So I want to be of service. And uh, I think that as artists, we need to do that, especially now, right? Uh, Beyond Bonnie says, and the beautiful reminder that we can do things for others and it means the world to someone else. That absolutely is true. And you don't have to invest. If you're someone who financially, and just let me cut over here. Isn't he cute? Somebody sent me this marshmallow man. <laughs> and he's sitting right looking at me with love, which I which I really love. But I'm going to stretch for a minute and go over to my, my teapot and get more tea. But you might as well have a look at what's happening as I walk as I walk over here. There we go. Had to fire up my teapot because it has a automatic turn off valve that keeps me from, you know, burning my shop down if I should leave the teapot on. It's really a lovely teapot for doing that. But again, this is the the situation. And thank you for saying that, Bonnie. And again, I want to thank you for commenting, letting me know how you feel about this. Have you experienced this from someone? Maybe it's a, on my Patreon page, there is an amazing artist who's a comic book artist. Challenges of his own, but that's not what I'm talking about, okay? He's just brilliant. And he gives and gives and gives so much of himself to everyone on that page. I just, he's really, he really is an inspiration. His name is Chris. But Chris reached out to us on Patreon and he asked us if we would volunteer to help him with a very special project he had to do. And I immediately raised my hand. I'm very busy. Don't get me wrong. But this was something that Chris asked and Chris had been so generous that I wanted to give back. I wanted to say, Chris, I'm there. I'm in. And uh, what he needed was to do a comic book for a little boy who has some challenges in his life. I think he's six or seven and he and he wrote a comic book he wrote a comic and there's a guy named the belfast batman a man who walks around in uh in belfast as a batman and he met this little boy this little boy showed him the story of his dream and vision of being batman's sidekick now we're not talking robin we're talking batman's sidekick and he wrote a comic and Chris asked us to, uh, any artist to come and help. And I stepped up and I helped. I knew nothing about comics. I still don't know a lot, but Chris walked me through it. And the whole experience about working with such an amazing artist was wonderful. And we were doing it for a little boy who had this dream. And quite frankly, the illustrations the boy did, I could not make heads or tails of. Honestly, I didn't understand them. So Chris helped me to translate them. He actually wrote the story based on the boy's story, and then we illustrated it. And the comic is four pages, six pages. But we took that extra mile, and we made this comic. I didn't tell myself, I don't draw well. I don't know comics. Why would Chris even want me? I just said yes. And learned so much. And then when that little boy got that comic in his hands, and he's six or seven, the excitement was beyond belief. To hear the, the voice of Belfast Fast Batman telling us how much this meant to this little boy. And to know that I had taken some of my time to give back to someone else. Wow. I mean, you know, come on. So all I'm saying is raise your hand. Don't worry about what you can or can't do. Just say, I want to be a part of it. You know, who knows what you're going to do, but how exciting. So um, as Bonnie says, that's what life is all about. So please comment. Please tell me how you're feeling because I want to know. I love reading. This is one of my favorite parts. 
Adam says, you're an amazing inspiration to be as an artist, and I'm proud to call you my friend, even if my ability is simple as taking pictures. You see that statement? How many people think taking pictures is simple? And if you saw Adam's work, you would even be more confused at this statement. So I'm just saying, Adam. Uh, <laughs> I'm still proud to call myself an artist. You're special and, and as I am, hugs. And he is really good. He is a detail. Don't let don't let Adam fool you here with this comment, right? He is a detail. He's like me. He's very detailed. His photographs mean a lot to him. So he's not just raising it up and making your hand go like this and putting a Tinkerbell there, okay? He's beyond that, all right? And uh, it's one of the joys of getting to know him and experiencing his talent because he he's a lot he's a lot more, you know, photography is a great art, right? In fact, I was just, um, I'm going to leave Adam's comment up here because I want this to resonate with you. This is the artist's brain. They think their work, although good, is it spectacular? I mean, as an artist, how can you say, oh, my work is spectacular? When someone calls it spectacular, just say thank you. Don't say no, it's not. Okay. We are better at accepting criticism than as human beings we are not good at getting compliments, okay? We get all red in the face and we're shy and we go, no, that's not it. Just say thank you, okay? Learn to be as big a sponge with the compliments as you are with the criticisms because I know you may not know this, but there are people out there that criticize just because they want to, not because it has any basis in you or the reality of you, okay? Seriously, people out there, this is their goal, is to take you down. Why? Because you're so confident, because you're so talented, because you're good at what you do. So if someone gives you a criticism and it's not any constructive in there, please wash yourself off. As my dad says, poison isn't effective unless you take it. And with that, I'm going to get my teapot. I love my teapot. I love my little teapot. Oh my goodness, it's so much fun, my little teapot. Okay, so as I pour tea, this is the important thing, okay? This is the thing that is so important is to, you know, when somebody loves your work, just say thank you. And because because when you guys comment, uh, I'll tell you, for how many people are watching and listening to care that those who actually speak up is is a huge is a huge gap. So that's why I continue to say to you, please comment because I want to hear how you're feeling. And if you're someone who doesn't want to comment just now, it's not pressure, okay? I'm not saying you have to comment, but I want you to. When you feel like it, you don't realize nobody is going to get on you, not on my watch, okay? Nobody's going to treat you poorly because... Um, you know, not on my watch. That's not what this group is about. And you guys are very, very respectful to everybody. So, there we go. Okay. Oh I forgot to let you watch me cross over. Sorry about that. <laughs> but now I've got my tea, and that makes me very happy because uh, I'm a tea freak. Okay. So anyway, the comments are really special. And those of you who comment, don't think I take them lightly. Every single comment is very, very important to me. And uh, I'm grateful when you do. So if you're sitting out there and you're shy, don't be shy. Because I love every comment. Nate says, you are not just an artist to many of us. That is just one of your titles. Many of us, you are, to many of us, you're also very dear and important friend and might as well be part of our family. Well, you are family. Yes, that's true. You're phenomenal at what you create. The items bring joy, but you are all, and all your love is a true treasure to myself. This is such a nice thing to say, Nate. Thank you for taking the time to write, to write this out. I know many others share this feeling, so just know that you mean so much more than being an artist when you say that he called an artist, you are extremely special. Yeah, it, it's, it's, thank you for saying that, Nate, because yeah, absolutely. Um, but Nate, <laughs> wow, you know, 
if I didn't react from someone calling me from the hospital, I just look at it and go, what kind of a person would I be? You know, it's like, what? you know what I mean? It's, it was such, it, it, it created a great impact on me and it, it really affected me. It really, really affected me. So I, that's why I said, I called it, we interrupt this program because I couldn't let it go. I couldn't let it go unspoken about it. You know, I couldn't go on with my life as if nothing had happened because to me, it was a seriously big deal. Pardon me as I stir my tea. There we go. I also love the fact that you're, you're patient. Uh, my videos aren't necessarily perfect. And I'm always making tea or walking around or... <sighs> Yummy. Uh, so I appreciate that as well. Okay. Ro well, Robin, good morning. Steve Barr says, every time I glance over at your Jiminy Cricket figurine in my living room, I smile. It's so happy for me, so uplifting. And when it eventually ends up in in drawn to help future offices, it will bring smiles to a lot of little faces when the young patients we serve come to visit. So thank you, Terry Harden Jackson. Art heals, art heals and inspires. Stephen, thank you for that. I really appreciate you taking the time and saying that. And that's it. Okay. Do you have, uh, Stephen, let me ask you this, uh, Steve, do you have other Jiminy Crickets and do they do the same or is it a little different or does it create different smiles? Because that particular Jiminy Cricket you're talking about that I showed earlier is one that is the hobo outfit and the woman who suggested it suggested it because everyone was doing the conscious conscience medal Jiminy Cricket, where he gets the medal as the conscience. And she said she wanted the hobo, that that was her special one. And so many jumped on the bandwagon, which is why I only have six left, I believe. Hello, Nate. <laughs> and Robin's, oh, and Nate's saying hello to Robin. I get it. <laughs> Isn't he a love, Robin? Isn't he something? Bob Berdine said, Kevin has given you an honor that's better than an Oscar. True artists put their heart and souls in their creation. Rose and I orchestrated a similar blessing for a friend who was on her deathbed. And Willie Ito is one who gave her a wonderful gift, which in turn gave her six more months of God of life. God bless the artist. And that is the truth. And Willie is a love. Bob, it's so lov lovely for you to mention Willie. I hadn't seen Willie in a long time and just seeing his shining face changed. He just, he's just a great, wonderful guy. Thank you, Robin. I'm sorry. It's been rough. It was hmm, Robin. It was rough with these ghosts, but I think when a piece means a lot to you, that that rough is just par for the course. Wouldn't you say, you know, I don't think I'm sorry. But I, maybe I didn't, I just kept being sad because it took so long, maybe. I wanted it to move faster for everyone because, I mean, it was two years plus. And then month after month, I was, you know, going, no, wait, no, wait. Kind of like this pandemic. We're going to open. No, wait. We're going to, no, no. Now, the other day, our, our president said, pray for Christmas. That's the reality. Pray for Christmas. Pray for Christmas when you get to take the masks off and be with each other. Yeah, don't think it's summer. If it's summer, that's a bonus. Look at that. That if you pray for Christmas and then they go, you guys are doing so good. We get to open in the summer. Aren't you going to be happier than being nickeled and dived to death with a next month, next month, next month? You know you will. Mm. So this is why I say, you know, but yeah, that was a frustration. But I get what you're saying, Robin, and I thank you for saying it. Uh, I hope it gives you some understanding of how we feel about you. Bob, it's strong. It's really strong. It's really, really intense. It was an intense moment. It was. And I really appreciate it. Uh, I adore my little Jiminy. And I love the fact that I actually know the artist who created him. And you can also know all my hands and everything. Painfully loving and 35 colors. Take a look at him again. <laughs> Leah. 
and you're just nuts. But that's why I only do a couple a year because they've got to mean this. I know your your dollar, every dollar is earned. Every dollar is not, you know, la, I won the lottery. Woohoo. I mean, we all would like to, right? But that's not what's been happening. So when you invest, that's a big deal. When you choose me over other things you might grab, uh, that's a big deal to me. And uh, it doesn't go lightly. I couldn't agree more with Bob. Thank you, Nate. Thank you. And I appreciate that. Kathy Collins says, I think that's the most beautiful thing you could say. I agree fully. And uh, I appreciate uh, Kathy. It wasn't Kathy. It's Katie. Sorry, Katie. See, I should read. I should learn to read your name. And, uh, <laughs> but thank you. I really appreciate you. Right. Absolutely right. Randy Crane says, that's really powerful. Thank you. And you're welcome. And thank you for saying thank you for actually typing it in the comments. Thank you for doing that. It's, uh, is it worth it? You have brought joy and happiness to so many people and you have achieved immortality with generations to come. Uh, yes. And as was said by Steve Barr, he's handing it on. He's giving joy through others. So by sharing it, you know, so you never know what work you do, where it's going to go or who it's going to benefit. And that's probably why I'm this busy. I can't stop. Well, I can, but it takes a bit of work. <laughs> and I'm more than happy to do it, you know. Uh, Holly Mac says, it sounds like Kevin gave you a beautiful gift. It's a nice reminder. We never know when we are helping someone. Well, and Holly Mac, you gave me a great gift. Uh, all of you on here are giving me a great gift. It's just, and please don't, don't think that all of you are not giving me the same gift. It's just every once in a while when I'm not paying attention, somebody, you know, hits me with a lightning bolt. I don't expect you guys, if you're not feeling well, to 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 write me or to call me, okay, <laughs> or to reach out to me. I expect you to get well, okay. <laughs> that's what, honestly, that's what I do. I'd get well, uh, but when somebody does that uh, because they are so moved that that's important, that makes me take notice. But let me also say that by commenting here and talking, speaking with me and telling me from your heart how you're feeling right now is important as well. You know, being quiet, I can't read your mind. Being quiet, and I know some of you are listening to this right now because you're at work and you can't, you can't chime in. You know, you'll get nailed from your office. And I think it's so sweet of you to be listening to me when you're working <laughs> because, you know, you could get in trouble. I don't want you to get in trouble. I don't want you to lose your job over me. So that too is not what I'm saying. Okay. But, uh, but what I am saying is that when you do comment, it just means so much to me is what I'm saying. So thank you to all of you who are commenting. And they are super amazing as well. Everyone is super amazing. And I thank you for that. Absolutely agree. With a moment to cherish, those interests come far and few between. That is exactly right, Nate. I'm sorry this has been so rough. Yeah, Lori, again, it's only rough because I choose to have it. You know, those ghosts were rough. I'm not going to lie. They were a little... That Ezra. <laughs> that Ezra. He's a stinker, that Ezra. But I just wouldn't give up. You know, there's the, it, when things are rough, you can always choose to stop, can't you? But something inside you just doesn't want to because, and, and one of the reasons I'm going to be very honest with you, Lori, is that I'm looking at a lot of the product that Disney's putting out and I'm not happy with it. Like those, um, I'll tell you what really disappointed me. I didn't buy them, but a, a guy did an unboxing of those potion jars that, that Disney was selling. And I think they were like $65 or something, $75 to purchase them. And, and they were supposed to hold a ghost inside. And when they lit up, it was a flat scry. It, I didn't think it delivered. It really had a great build, but it fell flat. And I just didn't like it. I just didn't think they could do. I didn't think they went that extra. 
which makes me go that extra. You follow me? If I look at art products that I'm seeing and I think they look like they were rushed or someone is being a little lazy, that's when I say to myself, I've got to go. I got to go the whole gambit. I've got to do the whole thing. And if you're an artist, I think you know what I'm talking about. If you see art at the Disney gallery that looks like maybe some people have pieced together or taken shortcuts in their painting. And I can't say this specifically, but I've heard other artists speak about it. But if you're a painter and you're painting everything, you're sketching it out and you're painting it A to Z and you're, you're going through the blood, sweat and tears of doing it. And someone else is taking like a Photoshop picture and they're pasting it on there and they're just, just sort of doing, altering that photo or whatever. That's not really painting, is it? Or maybe it is, I'm just not comprehending it that right. So let me just put that caveat on that if that's what you do, I'm not dissing you. I'm just saying, is that the same as, you know, taking a, a canvas, treating it and painting it from A to Z? Is that the same? And is that as important to a collector as the other? Or does this really have importance? You know, because I'm just learning about painting. So I'm asking the question. I'm not making a judgment. That first part sounded like I was making a judgment and I'm not. It just, I don't know. Um, Nick Sayer, watch this video. You can see Terry's Jiminy and she only has six remaining. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then Nate has a great uh, platform too. So I hope Nick reaches out to me. And then here's Janny who says, we so love you. Now, Janny's another one here that not only paints, but uh, uh, she has a passion in her painting that has really touched my heart and made me uh, get excited. I think that's one of the reasons I want to paint more. I did a little session with her that was so much fun and a few other girls up in a cabin. Um, thank you, Greta Jantz. And... Um, and she taught us about this, these little paintings that we made. And one of the things that she told us about her as we were painting was that she loves to recycle materials, that she's really about the planet. And so a lot of her paintings include recycled materials that would possibly end up as landfill. And so she just really helped me to, ex you know, I don't know that I will do the same yet, but it sure made me want to paint because I just, you know, and then my husband bought me these super cool paints that I'm just <laughs> so hungry to try. And, uh, and learning about the struggles from artists as a painter, I know I'm not going to be perfect. And believe me, I'll show you guys, probably do teasers here and then the full things on my Patreon page for people to watch. But the point is this that you can't expect to be perfect when you put that first paint to canvas. You've got that learning. And when you start to draw, you've got that learning curve, but you can do it if you keep with it. And those are going to be the struggles that you go through. But Janny's stuff, if you haven't seen her stuff, check it out. It's so vibrant and colorful. Bob Berdine says, happy birthday, Lindsay. It was Rose and my anniversary. We've been boyfriend and girlfriend for 41 years. It's a great day for us all. Thank you for saying happy birthday. You can imagine my husband, bless his heart. And in a few minutes, let's see, we're at an hour and 23, so I can still do it. Uh, I will show you, um, I will show you uh, what I did for his birthday. Because during the pandemic, I have to be careful. So uh, I will do that. I will do that after I read your comments because I really want to read some more of your comments just because. Important enough to call from the hospital. Sometimes hearing your voice, that's a little pick me up and you're so important. Love so many of us. Yes, I, I actually told Kevin a story that made him laugh so hard he started coughing and I felt like I shouldn't be on the phone. Oh, I'm making it worse. And Cheryl told me, as did Kevin and his little voice, that coughing is good for him. So to make him laugh uh, was actually helping him feel better. So I did it a couple more times. And then and then Kevin needed a nap. <laughs> so uh, so that was that was really special, too. Hello, Michael. Hello, Stephen. 
Uh, you think, yes, thank you for the reminder, Bob. A very happy birthday to Lindsay. Uh, he wanted to like, let it go over. He turned 64. I'm about to turn 64 in four months. We're actually exactly four months apart. He's February 21st. I'm June 21st. We're members of the 21 club. <laughs> but he wanted to just forget it. And I couldn't. I love him. I celebrate the day he was born. He's my, he's my knight in shining armor. He's the love of my life. I couldn't do it. But I also understood that he was concerned being high risk of going out during the pandemic because we still are purple. We may, may not be purple, purple, but we're still purple. So because we're purple, I had to be careful. And I will share with you what I did, because if you live in Southern California, you may want to do this too. Uh, Nick says, uh, Nate Singleton, I'll go back and peek after I can't seem to go back during the live look, says Nick. Uh, Nick let me do you a little favor if you're still here, okay? I'll do you a little favor right now, Nick, because that's what I'm here for. Here you go. Oops. There you go. There he is just for you. Jiminy Cricket. There he is. Woohoo! Just go to terryharden.com and click on online store if you want to learn more, okay? But there you go, just for you. That way you don't have to roll it back. That's what I'm here for. You can see little Jiminy. He has 35 hand-painted colors in him. And I think he's 195, I want to say, plus tax and shipping. But uh, yeah, yeah. So there you go. Does that help? A little dwelling on our little buddy. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Sweet of you to, to say something. Sweet of you to even... Yeah, absolutely, says Bob Burdine. I have your baby Groot, and he's wonderful. Thank you, he is, and also sold out. And that's because I only do two a year. I think that's possible, part of it, and because you feel them. And that's important. It's important to help you to feel your characters that you love because you love them so much. Bob agrees with Nate. Nate says, awesome. I think I think I have a picture of him too. If you don't want to go through the video later. See, but I just showed you, didn't I? <laughs> Cause we're here to, we aim to please. Just looked at the online store. Thank you, Bonnie. It's getting better each time. This online store is a little challenged because it tried Nate Singleton 100%. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Bob Burdine, you're another one who brings joy. That's absolutely true, Nate. Thank you, my friend. So happy to have gained you as a wonderful friend in the Disney family. They are right. Bob Burdine and Rose, so generous to a fault, actually. Isn't this great? You guys are just having this lovely chat, thanking each other and talking to each other, telling each other how special they are. Isn't this worth it? Hey, hey, hey. We're always here for you. Thank you, Jenny. I appreciate that. I think I have, see, they're still talking, Jiminy Cricket. I would usually think I'm not saying anything of importance, but I get it from you guys. <laughs> uh, there it is. Do I have rough dimensions of him? He's this big. <laughs> Does that work? He's about, uh, yeah, he's about uh, five tall. No bigger than five tall. And he comes in that little box and then the tissue paper is the wish upon a star tissue paper. Remember I told you I'm all about that whole experience. It doesn't just stay with the figure. You don't get him in bubble wrap with my logo taped to his stomach. It just, I don't do that. Ah, uh, now who's crying? Terry, I'm great for you each day. I know, right? Ugh, silly me. I wanted to be so stoic today, but it doesn't work. I'm a crier. What can I say? Uh, I will get some info from Terry for the moment when she has a moment. And like I said, about this tall. Um, and he's adorable. And he comes in a box that's like this. If I had one here, I could show you. If you want to wait till the AMA and ask me, I'll actually just say, can I see a Jiminy? I'll, I'll pull it up. He's in the other room. He's in the place where I'm not. Have you ever noticed as a person that whenever you're talking in some place, you go, oh, great, that's in the place where I'm not. And you that's how you get your exercise is running back and forth to the place where you are not, where the stuff is. 
I'm thrilled to join my first Patreon Zoom this week. I am thrilled for you too. Katie, did you get uh, all the information? Be sure to make sure that I have given you the Facebook stuff as a patron and that I can reach you via emails and stuff because it's at 11. We're going to push it back. So, and we're doing it so more people can join. They were people asked. To, for us to make it so more could join. I've got a lot of people in the UK and Paris and stuff like that. So it's going to be a fun one. So just let me know if I've been lax, okay? Uh, yes, adopt, don't shop. Sorry, huge passion for that. Yes, I love that you adopt. I mean, Stitch got adopted, Jimmy got adopted, and now the ghost got adopted. However, uh, again, Ezra says uh, that he... Ezra is one of the, Ezra is a stinker. Ezra thinks he's going to adopt you, not the other way around. As a specter, he kind of feels it's his choice, not your choice. And that's kind of the battle that I've been having with Ezra. This may sound a little crazy if you're joining me right now, but this is the reality, guys. Sometimes your characters take on their own personalities. If you are a writer and you're writing about someone, do you sometime when you're writing fiction, the character kind of pushes you in a direction you had no idea you were going there. I'm telling you, same in sculpting and painting, I believe. I haven't painted in a while. I'm about to. Listening today, says Deanna, and feeding her pets. And Deanna has some, some amazing pets. And Nate did a spotlight where we got to see a couple of things in his home that blew us away. And Nate didn't even realize it until he showed it to us. So, yeah, if you want to become part of Patreon, uh, there's a lot more in store that I can't even tell you. <laughs> it's a great point. I'm guilty of accepting criticism easier than praise. Yes. And you're not alone. And it really hurts us. I mean, like, for example, if you're someone who broadcasts or you're someone who does art and you get all of these good reviews, but there's that one bad review. What's the one we sit on and worry about? And it could have just been someone who was having a bad day and made this much mean nothing. So I always say, if it doesn't, if it's not constructive, you got to erase it. Don't even, you know, that's real junk. Okay. Is a perfect example. Wow. How could you even show that it's junk and they don't say anything? And then there's no construction, you know? So a constructive criticism would be, to me, this looks junky because it's busy. And if I was going to help, if I, if I may, maybe you could have a better focal point or maybe not so busy, maybe not so many colors, maybe a little more on model. Okay, so vinyl nations, I can't stand them. I might paint a couple of them, though, because people are asking me for uh, to paint a couple um, artists, one of a kind of the vinyl nations. But I'm not a fan of the vinyl nations because they're not a model. I don't understand what the point of them is. And when I see more and more painted, I get more and more confused. I just don't know why anyone would could collect them. And my advice would be, I think they should be more on model. But that's not the point of a vinyl nation, is it? Vinyl nations have a different agenda, a different goal. So I have to understand that. So I can't just call them crap because that's not fair. Why do I not like them? Why do they not resonate with me? It's the same with the artist who paints those Mickey and Minnie's. You see them mostly in Florida, Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, et cetera, et cetera. And they all are these garish, loud, primary colors, patchwork colors. So many colors, you can't even see the character. But a lot of people like them. Okay, so why don't they resonate with Terry? Well, it's not fair of me to say this is just junk. It, 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 I have to say it doesn't resonate with me because I think they should be more on model. And it's been my experience that if they're not on model, they don't sell well. I know here in Disneyland, they don't sell very well. That's because most of the people on the West Coast want things to be more on model. This is my experience as a sculptor. They got to have more stuff on model. In Florida, people seem to be a lot more open to things that are not on model things that are a little more, they take a little more license as an artist to create their, what they're thinking of, even if it has nothing to do with the characters on model, like this guy with all the brightly colored 
uh, primary colored patchwork where you can't even, in my opinion, see the character. But there's people who collect it. It sells, as I understand, very well in Florida. So who am I to mean criticize that artist? Just say, that's not my uh, cup of tea, if you will. Okay. But if that artist stepped up and said, why is my stuff not selling in, in West Coast? I'd say, because you need to be more on model. That's what is the case in on the West Coast. West Coast want it to be more like the actual Disney characters or they don't sell as well. True story. That's not me saying it. That's you saying it. Okay. Okay. Spring will come, says Stephen, and it will. But we have to be patient and understand this marathon is just that. Don't skip out. It's 26 point, you know, two marathon. Don't skip out at mile 25, okay? Keep it up. You're doing great. Uh, he says three and a half inches tall, two inches wide. There you go. <laughs> so I said about five. Uh, there you go. See, what do I know? I'm just the artist. <laughs> Terry, you need to go pro so we can follow you everywhere. LOL. Yeah. How do I do that, Jenny? Let's have a brainstorm. How can I do that? I also need to be a Disney legend. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm legendary Imagineer, but Disney needs to recognize that. Why is this so important to me? Because they're recognizing people that I don't think should be Disney legends. I'm not going to name names, but I just, you know, for the longest time, I used to think I'm not, uh, Bob Gurr, I'm not Andreas Deja, I'm not uh, 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 Floyd Norman. Those are Disney legends. But then a couple other people got named as Disney legends, and I'm like, wait a minute, the criteria is, is her stuff international? It is. I have designed for three parks. And is her stuff memorable? It is. I did Dragon's Lair. Do I have something to say? And am I an inspiration? It's absolutely true. Yes. So I deserve to be a legendary. I need to be a Disney legend. And uh, I think I think I just keep saying it. You know, you got to speak it, right? So I speak it all the time. I, that's why I say legendary Imagineer, because I deserve to be a Disney legend. Some of the people they choose, I just don't get it. I don't. And so why was I telling myself I should not be a Disney legend when I have all the qualifications of being a Disney legend? So there you go. Wake up call for Terry. Thank you, Jenny. You do not have to thank me, but you're so very welcome. I speak from the heart and I love you very much. And I don't have to thank any of you, but I will because I appreciate your comments. I am as well. It's easy to get in our heads and have problems believing the good that others see in you. And a lot of times... There's, there's statements like a wise man, you know, a man is humbler than the dust. And that if you say thank you because somebody says something nice to you that you have this huge ego. I do have a huge ego, by the way, but I'm just, I'm digressing right now. But the point, <laughs> but the point is this, you can accept a compliment because the person doesn't give it without really sincere reasoning. So to, to go like this, I think, is not doing them a service. If they're taking the time to tell you how much they care, you need to take the time and say thank you. Don't don't tell them they're wrong. You know, that's that's what I'm saying. Really enjoying the energy this morning. Remi uh, reminder of being thankful and appreciative for each other. Well, Bonnie, thank you for saying that. How sweet of you to say that. Many people say that it's one thing to be all circus dog entertainer. Not that I am, but you could be that, but not really showing the behind the masks that we wear is doing people a disservice. So um, I want to thank you for that. My husband gave me a yogurt, so I'm taking this opportunity to open it up. He's like, you need to eat because you talk a long time. This is the other thing I love about all of you is you let me be casual and you know, as an artist, that we don't like to uh, eat, sleep, or poop or pee, and we just need to do that to be healthy. Because you don't, we really shouldn't be dying for your art. So, uh, but anyway, thank you, Bonnie, for saying that because today I didn't know how people would react, and I have to say, but that didn't make me stop. And I don't think it should be hurtful to people. 
what you say mean, but yet, hmm, please write that. It's good. Greek yogurt. Okay. But it should be said. So I did. Thank you for saying that. Making the right color for things is not easy. Ho, ho. You said a mouthful there, Deanna. Jiminy Cricket, when you, here's the thing, and let's just talk Jiminy a little bit. Jiminy Cricket, when you are designing a character for someone and they say hobo, you're really looking at for the personality. Me as a sculptor, I'm looking for that, that personality of the character that will invoke a feeling in you, okay? I want you to look at him and fall in love with him before you worry how much he is, okay? So if I'm doing that, I'm looking at that. But Deanna makes a very good point here. Then it comes to color. And my painters, when they looked at that, said, oh my goodness, do you realize there are 35 individual colors in Jimmy Cricket? Well, I didn't realize that. And I had no idea about that because I'm not the painter I'd like to be yet. And so, wow. So this is why prices are the way they are with me. I can't tell my painters or my mold makers to cut their prices because when you're doing 50 to 100 figures or you're um, painting 50 to 100 figures, you've got to be able to feel like you're as special as me and my sculpting. I think if you, so we all get together and we price out our work. I didn't do this with the ghosts and they were a real shocker to me and to you. They were much more than what I originally quoted. So I won't do that again because it put a lot of people in some bad positions that I didn't mean to do, including myself. It's a challenge. Yeah, exactly. So here Nate talks about the sculptures I was talking about and that most ended up clearance. So, you know, you don't, you, you don't want to do, you also, let me point this out as an artist, okay? You also don't want to oversaturate your market, okay? You don't want to do too much because then people have to decide which ones they're going to collect. And you don't want to assume what, what you guys want. I think the one time you could make an assumption, but it wasn't really an assumption, was it, was little Grogu. Because you all loved Baby Yoda slash Little Grogu before you knew who he was, right? You love him and you you can't seem to get enough of this little guy. And, and so Disney and anyone who creates a Grogu can many, pretty much feel self-assured that you're going to collect him. But not if he's cruddy. Not if he's junky. Not if he, he doesn't have the little sweet face or the or the heart that Grogu gives us every time he's on Mandalorian. So you can't just, you know, do what you think is going to sell and do it. And, and, and then you're surprised if it ends up on the clearance shelf, you know? So as an artist, you got to take the time to understand the heart. And if you don't understand the heart of it, okay, then you're sitting there saying, um, exactly. You know, you've got to understand the heart of the character. And as an artist, you cannot know every Disney character that people love. You can't. You can't. So you need to ask people who love that character. Tinkerbell is a perfect example. I wanted to do the ultimate Tinkerbell because Tinkerbell, people, people get crazy when it comes to collecting Tinkerbell. And uh, I didn't, I wanted to do a Tinkerbell that meant an awful lot but I needed to talk to Tinkerbell collectors because the first thing I noticed with Tinkerbell was that there were at the time seven different Tinkerbell. So I was like, which one do I do? Do I do the one with the wand? Many of you said, ah, no. Tinkerbell doesn't use a wand, okay? All right, I didn't know that. I don't know Tinkerbell like you guys know Tinkerbell. The next thing was that the Tinkerbell on the television version of Wide World of, of uh, Wonderful World of Color or um, the other Disney TV series is her dress was longer. Her skirt was longer. Many of you said, uh-uh, that's for the, the censorship on television. But the movie Tinkerbell, you know, you saw her little pants underneath her skirt. That's important. And so I spoke with Tinkerbell enthusiasts to get Tinkerbell 
correct. So when I finally did my Tinkerbell tiptoeing across the map, which I'm going to take a moment to show you because why not, in case you maybe have not seen her. Let me see if I can find her really quick. She's also an elusive one. Let's see if I can see her in here. I love that you let me just take a moment to see if I can find where these little stinkers reside because you never know. You never know. I'm going to show you something else too. Here she is. Here she is. Here's my girl. So this Tinkerbell right here, um, this Tinkerbell right here was designed and look at all the stitches looking at her. Isn't that funny? <laughs> They're all watching her as she's posing, but she's tiptoeing across the map. This is a result of all the Tinkerbell people I got together with and helping me. And then the fine tuning person was an amazing woman out of Vegas named Liz Bradley. Who was a Tinkerbell enthusiast right down to her mud flaps. That's all I'm going to say. And um, she helped me to fine tune this character. And, uh, but this is the Tinkerbell you asked for. The Mark Davis Tinkerbell. And the reason she is so special to you guys is because she has everything Mark Davis. And the reason uh, that she does is because Alice Davis is a dear friend of mine. And she actually sent me the turnarounds for this Tinkerbell, meaning the sketches that Mark had done. She sent me copies so that I could nail her face, nail her pose for all of you. Do right by you Tinkerbell collectors. And you can still get this Tinkerbell. Not from me and not at my store. Uh, she sold out around 2005. She was introduced in 2001. But 2,500 of her Disney created. So she is out there. You can look for her. Um, signed, if it's not coming from me, the price, if you get it under 200, you're doing well. And unsigned, ah, about the same, I'd say. If you can, she originally sold for 75. But people now know her value and uh, anything under $200 is going to be good. And if you do get her, hit me up. I'm happy to sign her for you, okay? But uh, she's a lovely, lovely girl. She comes in a black box. My name is all over it. And, uh, and it's impressive. You know, so this is what happens. Let me show you something else. The, I want to illustrate my point really quickly about asking the collector about, like asking you about what you want, okay? So if I don't know Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, which is the one I talked about because I didn't know Oswald from, from uh, Mortimer, honestly. I had seen him at California Adventure and he had really cool flat ears, but I knew nothing about him other than Walt had fought to get him back. But the Walt Disney Company continued to fight to get him back. I mean, we're talking about not giving up. Why didn't they give up? You know, but they didn't. And they got him. And my friend Diana said, you are all about never giving up. You have to sculpt Oswald the Lucky Rabbit because he is the poster child for never giving up. And she was absolutely right. And I only wish I had done, was able to do it so that she could enjoy it. But all you Oswaldians came to the to my rescue and he was a beautiful, kinetic, happy-go-lucky little sculpture. Okay, but here's another example of that. This is Mickey and Minnie in love. And this is my actual wax. I work in a toy wax that is absolutely remarkable. And um, Mickey and Minnie in love, as commissioned by a very dear friend of mine, her name was Pamela Grinson at the time. Pamela loves Mickey and Minnie. I am not a fan of Mickey and Minnie. I'm sorry, I'm not. But I was smart enough to have someone like Pamela sit right with me and go through, tell me why she loved Mickey and Minnie. And that helped me to create this magnificent piece. And I'm not saying that, that's a Pamela statement. So the idea was that Pamela had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Mickey and Minnie's in love. And every single one of them didn't look in love to her. And she was getting married. Her husband proposed to her at the Disney castle and she later got married near, you know, at Disneyland pretty much near it. And I was, I was a part of it. I want to thank you again, Pamela and Pete, but she wanted this and she kept saying, I need her in love. So when you commission me to do a piece and they're not 
inexpensive. I'm just going to warn you, they are an investment. Okay. But you can talk to me about it. We can work on size. We can kind of figure out what your budget is, payment plan, whatever. If you have something in your soul that you must have, we can talk about it. Okay. I'm very flexible. I want you to have what you want. Okay. But Mickey and Minnie, she wanted them in love and she wanted this to be a cake topper. So the first thing I did was I put Mickey with a top hat and she, knowing Mickey and Minnie really well, excuse me, said Disney Classic Collections had done a Mickey with a top hat. So I said, well, that's not going to work. She doesn't want me to copy something else, even though I didn't even know what it was, right? But here's the story of Mickey, Minnie, and Love. I want you to really look at these two characters, okay? Here's Minnie. Now, Minnie has been proposed to, because this is what's happening. Mickey is actually kneeling, holding a ring, proposing to Minnie, okay? Mickey and Minnie in love. I'm going to break this down for you so you kind of understand why a, a one-of-a-kind personal. There are no others. This is completely Pamela and Pete's. That's what I'm saying. When I do a commission by you, there's only one ever. There are no molds made. Nothing. It's it's them. It's for you. So this is this is it. So what I did was uh Pamela picked the dress and I recreated the dress. She sent me the dress and I recreated the dress. Now I want you to look at Minnie very carefully. Minnie has wanted Mickey to propose to her for a long time, I heard from Pamela. And she really dreams of the day that he's going to propose to her. But up until now, he hasn't been doing it. So he finally gets on one knee. There's a plus for her because there's a ring there. Ooh, maybe Mickey's serious this time. But she's still not sure. She's still not sure. She looks over at him. There's her face, her beautiful dress, her shoes. And notice she's got her feet crossed. She's not standing with both feet. Why? Because if we go back to the full mini, she's still not sure. She wants to believe him so much. She wants to believe that he wants to marry her. But she's been here before, says Pamela to Terry, and she's not sure. So we depict this as a sculptor or an artist in the overall body language of the character. So Minnie's hand is at her chest. Could it be that this is true? I've been here so many times before. Her legs are crossed because she's just not sure. The smile is there because I don't want him to think I don't believe him, but she's been there so many times before. Now, if we jump over to Mickey, Mickey's looking up at her. I think he knows today is the time he's going to propose, but he can't really make her believe it. Oh, that's a Tinkerbell. He can't really make her believe it. So, if we again go back to the overall sculpture and look at the two of them, you can see he has, he's leaning forward. He means business this time. He's going to propose to her. So his body is leaning forward. His smile is extra smiling. He's holding up the ring because he knows they've been here before. And she's, I mean, look at her. She's pulled back a little bit. Is he going to punk me again? Or is he really going to put a ring on it? You know what I mean? And so that's why the cross feet. That's why the hand to the chest. And then the final thing, and this is what made Pamela cry, is this part. Right here. Her hands. Minnie is not going to give her entire hand to Mickey. She's done it a couple of times and she's been hurt. So she's only going to give him just a couple of fingers to see if he actually means what he's going to say. So this is the thinking that goes through a one of a kind piece that I do for you guys. Okay. I break it down after speaking with you 
And what is it you need? And for Pamela, when she saw it, she burst into tears. It was not only Mickey and Minnie in love. It was Mickey and Minnie in love per the story she had told me why Mickey and Minnie mean so much to her. Had Pete proposed to her before or maybe hinted at it and then didn't do it? Not important, really, for me. I just wanted to know what Mickey and Minnie were up to. And I don't know them. I'm a Tigger person. I know my Tigger. But I don't know them. I can't know every character. You guys introduce characters to me that I don't know. Like, uh, can you see that little dude right here? This is from, um, what's it called? The guy who lost his father just, just knew. His dad is like the bottom half and he's got to, you know, he's got to build the top half before he loses his dad forever. This is his pet. He's a dragon. I love him. I don't know his name. And he moves around. He's now, you see how he's on my microphone right there? He's a cute little spirit. I don't know. I don't know his name, but boy, he is, he's a prankster too. So uh, I can't know everybody, but if they're your passion, I talk to you and we sit down and we learn about each other's passion and we work on it. So, uh, so that's how it works. Larry says, I must tell you, I had shared some of my work with you a few ago on Facebook message. You took the time to review it and answer me back. Oh, Larry, I'm so glad. <laughs> Life is so crazy. I, 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 you know, oh, I would have really been upset with myself if I hadn't. That meant the world to me. Artists like you are unique since you're not only committed to your work, but also committed to inspiring and educating others. I love how you're not afraid to share your fears, your failures, as well as your successes as an artist. But it's the fears that make us move forward. Isn't that right, Larry? And I, I'm like you. I love it when an artist I look at and go, whoa, whoa. And I see that. And then they share that they were going through the same trauma as I have. So Larry, I'll share with you just a, just a, one thing, and that is uh, Michelangelo. I love Michelangelo. I have loved Michelangelo since I was knee high to a grasshopper, and oh my goodness, in his letters, I got a book that is his actual letters to his brother, and one of the things he says why is why do people who know nothing about art have all the money? Have you ever felt that way, Larry? Have any of you ever felt that way? And here is a man who we just, he's, 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 he's a, wow, you know? And then he talks about his challenges when doing things like the Sistine Chapel, which as we all know is a, oh my Lord moment. But there were actually people who painted over his work. Do you realize for the longest time people thought the Sistine Chapel that Michelangelo was an amazing sculptor, but a not a real good painter. And then they cleaned it. Oh, it was dirty from the candles. He is good at painting. Can you imagine? That's Michelangelo. So to hear those positives and negatives, you kind of say to yourself, it happened to him? And oh, wow. So Larry, I want to thank you for that because that is a super big deal. That is a very important uh, statement that we have to do. So as artists, we are obligated to share. I think we need to, to let you know that we're going through the same things you are, that when we start something, we have to stumble and fall. Like I'm about to paint. I'm going to show you all the stuff that I go through. Okay. My biggest, let me talk to you about painting right now. I'm like this. Okay. Cause I'm talking to artists who use a white canvas and they start with the eye and they paint out. In fact, one I really love, he not only paints out, but he seals it as he goes. His portrait. So that it can't be changed once he likes it on a white canvas. Now, there's other artists, many, that tell you, you got to get rid of that white because it, it it's a false, it's a falsehood. It's so bright that it actually counters what you're putting on there in colors, which is the right way. I mean, I'm asking, which is right, white or a color background? Well, the key is to try both ways, correct? And see what you like better. 
But it is very interesting because the old masters used to coat in like a, a burnt sienna or a yellow ochre or something. And then you'd sketch on that and then you'd move forward or you'd sketch on that and then you'd do it. The process, whatever the process is, you would do that first and then you'd work your colors because you could do your lights and darks. This is what this fellow did who did this amazing sculptor. He started with a, a color base. He says it's extremely important that you do that, that you need to learn your lights and your darks in order to have a proper foundation. Whereas I think the people who work from a white canvas and take it all the way to the finished eye and then they go into the face and they finish it all up as they go along, probably are saying the same thing. They're just approaching it a little differently. So as a brand new beginner, you're kind of like, hmm, what are their failures look like? What, what, what? What happens when they don't like it? That's exactly a good question, right? Because many painters say, don't go all the way. Don't go A to Z on the eyeball, A to Z on the mouth, A to Z on the face until you've mapped in all your darks and lights. So you got to try it both ways is basically what my point is. So thank you for saying that, Larry. Thank you. Jenny is a phenomenal artist. I adore her work. Yeah, Jenny is. She's really good. And Jenny can tell you. You know, if she has a failure, how does she do it? You know, she says one of the best things about the stuff she works is gesso, G-E-S-S-O. -S -S She's like, when in doubt, gesso. <laughs> and I was like, gesso? Because in sculpting, we don't use gesso. But uh, you can bet I'm going to be practicing and trying stuff out. You are so sweet. Love you to the moon. Your heart is so amazing. Artist, inspiring artist is the best ever, isn't it, Jenny? I love Janning painting the door videos. Yeah, Deanna. Janny is one of these people. She's she's adorable. She um, when we first met, she had done this giant painting that she said, and and she was of the mindset that uh, people weren't buying art up in Canada. And uh, I said, maybe not her art. Okay, which is a harsh thing to say to somebody. But I followed it with. Let me help her price it. And then we talked about creating smaller things that were more affordable that would lead up to the painting and even smaller and even smaller. Now, I won't go into Jenny's and my conversation, but what I will go into is Jenny also, remember what I told you, she's about recycling and enter some amazing doors, like not the doors, the rock group, but doors as you walk, walk through, she paints them and she doesn't just paint them. She makes them magical. So if you're someone who has a door that's kind of eh, and you want a beautiful painted door, you could hire her or commission her to teach you how to do it if you're too far away because she really loves to teach and she'll show you how to do it A to Z. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to, you know, commission her to teach you how to do it or to paint you one and then get it shipped. But seriously, she's really, you want a door like hers? She's going to walk you. She's going to help you do it because she's, she's got the, she's got the technology. Happy anniversary to you two youngins, Bob Berdeen. I say the same as Nate. Sorry, I missed that part of your comment somehow. No, you didn't. You just went back and saw it. That's the way you are. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm on a mission to get Kev on the Patent process. I agree too. Yeah, Kev is really talented, but he doesn't believe it, does he, Nate? And we've all said it to him. He's really uh, great. Deanna says her tortoises are still hibernating. Isn't she funny? She comes with it's these zingers because she's all about animals. So out of left field comes the tortoise comment. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Nate. You guys can make that happen. I don't know how, but I know you can. And thank you. I feel like it, Joseph. I really do. Uh, met you briefly at your Cindy's Disney Legend Dinner, says Bonnie, back before I knew Facebook page. I was shy then. We'll need to find the picture of us. I would love that, Bonnie. Please do. Please do. I need her in my collection. Absolutely. She's good. You know she's good. I took Mansion's Bride needs to be. Ah, I think Mansion's Bride needs to be sculpted. I love the bride. And you know what I'd like to, well, I'm not going to say, but I think the bride should come with a painting. That's all I'm going to say. Onward. Thank you, Joshua. Onward. And onward, this little beastie, this one right here, uh, is so much fun. I don't know his name. 
He's really cute. He's really funny. And he moves around. You may not believe me, but he does. Ask Diane uh, Embalm. She noticed he wasn't up. He likes to rest on the microphone. Do you guys have a cat who likes to, to sleep in your spider plants? Because uh, that's that little dragon. He loves to be on that other microphone. Blazy. Thank you, Joshua. He is so, he's a something. I don't know much about him other than he's a stinker. He, he can be found everywhere. Blazy. Thank you, Joseph. See, I, you guys know this. And this is the blessing about this, right? Is that I have you guys to reach back and ask. Ray and the Last Dragon coming out next month for Disney. Uh, I'm excited about it, but I'm not paying the extra. Uh -uh. I think Disney gets enough from us that I'm not going to pay an extra 30 bucks to see it. I'll just wait. Mm -hmm. I'll wait. Thank you for letting me finish my yogurt. I will wait and see it after it goes, you know, drops on Disney Plus for free. Just my opinion, okay? I don't expect them. I know they need to raise their money for the work that they're doing. I'm just not in need to do it that fast. But I am excited about it. I am. I am just, I am. Thank you, Nate. Yes, indeed. I also have been painting more, says Larry. It always intimidated me, and I didn't like the lack of control. I felt using a brush instead of a pencil and marker. My character paintings have really improved since, but I still have so much more fun. So much more fun. It's, it's true. But if you know that it's a learning process, Larry, wouldn't you say that's the case? Yeah, absolutely. So now before I exit, guys, at the two hour and six mark, before I exit, I'm going to show you something. We're going to talk about my husband's birthday. I promised I would end with this. I'm going to end with this. If I have time, I'll, I'll check out your comments before I leave. But OK, so my husband, high risk, very special. Okay, here we go. Okay, Michael Leslie just called me. Forgive me, but okay. So I'm going to go to my pictures here, and I'm going to show you this. So what do you get for someone who is high risk, nervous about going out during the pandemic because your Southern California is, is uh, 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 the epicenter? How do you get him to get out? Answer, Lady Bird Cafe in Silver Lake. Lady spelled L-A-D-Y, bird spelled B-Y-R-D, cafe as in a place to have a great breakfast or a lovely lunch. The Lady Bird Cafe has come up with a great way for you to, to dine outside and feel super safe, especially if you're someone who's high risk. Enter, ta-da, greenhouses. Is this brilliant or what? This is brilliant. Go ahead. Tell her it's brilliant. This is brilliant. These greenhouses allow you to be in a safe environment, completely protected when you take your mask off. And every table has one. They may have a couple of others that don't, but I think the majority of them are these little greenhouses. This woman who owns this restaurant, uh, she came up with this and it's just, it's just absolutely brilliant. It's brilliant. Misty uh, is her name and Paul is the person who oversees her restaurant when Misty isn't there. And uh, Paul is amazing. And what I did was I wrote to Misty and I told her my story. This is to show you that you guys need to, win. don't tell yourself no. Always ask because they can say no. She was lovely. I told her my story about my husband having a birthday and how my husband is high risk and that he needed to be safe. And I saw this on Channel 5, LA Unscripted with Dana, and I just said, this is what I can do for him. So I'm going to show you. Here we are inside the greenhouse. We're still wearing our masks because... Uh, the waitress is going to, I mean, the, the server is going to come, but you see in the foreground here, the little uh, bar, the little, uh, what is that? The QR code. 
That's how you get the menu. You get the menu on your phone so that they don't even bring you a menu. It is so about keeping you safe. Here you can see in the background uh, someone walking around. That could be Paul. And then the other greenhouses behind my husband's um, cappuccino. And here's the food. It, you know, my husband is a behind the camera kind of guy. So I'm going to show you a couple of pictures I snuck, but he's a, but take a look. These are poppy seed pancakes with blackberries on top, blueberries on top. And then mine is a French toast. I'm going to just hover down. Mine is a French toast with strawberries on top. And we have a little bacon, a little cappuccino there. But I mean, my, I'm, and, and we're in the greenhouse and we're comfortable and we're safe and we don't have to worry about another table because we're protected by the greenhouse glass. And there's his cappuccino. They did a little heart for him. And then there's his birthday gift. That's the ice cream they gave him. They even gave him a little birthday gift. Isn't that cute? Okay, let me see what else I can show you because I guess... Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So let me show you the rest. Okay. So, okay. Here we go. So here he is in his mask and he's showing the water because we're waiting for the, the, the girl, our, our server to come and we want to protect her and she wants to protect us. And then once it's done, here we are. And there's that QR code. Aren't those glasses cute? Cause it's the lady bird cafe. So she even has the themed glasses. And here's us together. Finally, I had to do that. I had to fight for that. Otherwise, it's the Terry show, I'm afraid. You know, just tons of it. And then I snuck this one too. Him actually taking a picture of the cappuccino that you want. But I want you to see their fresh air, but the air comes from the top. All around you is protected, completely protected. And here he's showing on his phone a message from a friend that is been his friend forever. And it says happy birthday. And it's, it's, I think it says something like happy birthday, old man or something. And it's Frankenstein. He loves the monsters and everything. Now he's taking a picture of his birthday present, the little ice cream and blowing it out. So you can see him do it again, blowing it out. Isn't that cool? Isn't that fun? So he really loved this gift. And it took all of my creative powers to make this gift happen because he, um, he, he's very high risk. And so I had to keep him safe. So that's what we did. We did breakfast. We ate at the Ladybird Cafe greenhouses. And when I say I asked, she, uh, Paul, and, um, you know, they, they, Paul and Misty both did me a favor by reserving the greenhouse for me because he was high risk. And uh, they usually have you stand out in line and the line did not social distance. So uh, I was concerned because I knew that when you're super high risk, my husband has a heart condition that, uh, you know, you have to be super, 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 super careful. So here he got to have this beautiful experience. He really loved it. He thought it was very special. We came home. We started to watch some of the movies that we have to vote on for the Academy and also for the Screen Actors Guild. I made a nice uh, drink. He fell asleep for a while. And then um, he wanted to order a pizza. He loves pizza. Pizza is very high in salt, but it's his birthday. So I said, I we, we worked hard to keep the salt down and um, he got to have his pizza. He loves this pizza that he orders. And so we had pizza last night. We have some, we can even have for breakfast today, but he really enjoyed it, enjoyed it, enjoyed it, enjoyed it. So, uh, so that's what I ended up doing for someone during the pandemic is, uh, someone as wonderful as the Ladybird Cafe. And, uh, I actually took her an autographed picture of the dragon's lair because she loves Imagineers. She loves Disney. I didn't get to meet her, but I, I gave one to Paul. And then I'm going to write them a handwritten thank you note because handwritten thank you notes are very important. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Um, um, I'm going to come back and look at a couple of what you've got um, here. 
uh, Nate says, have a wonderful day. And then Deanna says, hugs, have a great week. Um, Cindy, hi, Cindy, does a heart. Angie says, how cute. We're in Iowa and have heated igloos. This is brilliant. This is just brilliant, Angie. I was so grateful for the greenhouse and I would love an igloo too. I've seen bubbles too. I think Chicago has little inflatable bubbles or something. I don't know how those work, but I just love it. I just loved it. And I was so grateful because trying to pick something for my husband wasn't easy, you know? Oh, thank you, Cindy, for saying that. I'll let Lindsay know. Looks tasty. The food was great. The breakfasts are very neat. The the heated igloos sound very exciting. But anyway, uh, uh, we did. Thank you, Bonnie. And we call that where there's a will, there's a way. I wanted to end on an up note. And I want to thank you guys for hanging with me and sticking with me and holding my hand and having my back as I shared my heart with you today. If you're joining me after the live video, welcome. Please continue to comment. I will read them. I don't know how diligent I'll be this week about reading them because my husband's off for the week and we have a lot of work to do and uh, he wants to get it done. So I don't know how much I'll be online, but if I am, I will go and I will read them. I promise, I promise. I know what it takes for you to comment. So thank you. Have a lovely day. Do something nice for someone else. It could be as simple as a phone call. And I will talk to you uh, very, very soon. Love you guys so much. Bye for now.